and welcome back to my channel. So, long time no see. Um, it has been a little bit since I've uploaded a video and I really apologize for that. Um, there's been a couple of like updates in our life and big changes. First and foremost, I want to introduce little Jasper Lewis. He was born September 20th at 8 pounds and 20 and a half inches long and he is such a sweet addition to our family. We love him and we're so happy to have him. So that's one of the big changes. The other one is we've moved. We were able to get a larger house and it all just happened so quickly. We wound up moving about two and a half, three weeks after he was born. So it was just, you know, it's just been crazy. And, but we're getting settled in. So apologize for just dropping off the face of the earth, but yeah. So I wanted to hop on here today, not only to introduce him, but also to share his birth story. I originally had planned to um, film a little bit of him, me giving birth, not me giving birth to him, but him being born and just the journey up to, but nothing went as planned or as I expected. So I thought I would just kind of do, share a story, the story about it as I introduce him. So a little bit of a preface, all of my babies were born, or usually come early. My first was four days early from his due date and my second was um, nine days early. So we totally expected this one to come quite a bit early as well, at least, you know, a week, week and a half, possibly two. So that was our plan. Um, my mom came up, you know, I think two weeks before his due date, which was the 21st of September. And even that week leading up, we, we, every night it was like, oh goodness, I'm going to go into labor because I would just start having the really intense Braxton Hicks. I had some contractions in there and then they would just, you know, fade off, which, you know, okay. But it was just very confusing because we expected the following week my mom got in, we completely expected to give birth that week. Like, you know, according to history, I'm going to be giving birth probably this week. It didn't happen. Okay, well, the next week I have to be giving birth, right? You know, it was just consistent, like, oh my word, expecting it to be like the others. The other, my other two births, which it wasn't. September 20th, at 3.30 in the morning, I'm woken up by contractions. But they're about 20 minutes apart. Okay, so no need to panic then because 20 minutes is, you know, that's quite a bit of apart. Okay, so I started just walking, breathing through them. And then, you know, eventually my husband wakes up for work. Um, in between those contractions, I've been trying to sleep, but, you know, he's given birth and then labor. Um, and contractions 20 minutes apart, that doesn't really happen. <laughs> um, my husband gets up and I tell him, you know, if anything continues to progress, I'll call you. Okay. So he goes to work. So they continue to progress, getting a little closer, a little closer. And then finally I, ha I start having them about five to seven minutes apart. And I'm like, uh oh, you know, my second boy was born really, really fast. Um, about two and a half hours from my water breaking and we were, so we were kind of expecting him to go, this one to go fast as well. So I call my husband and I tell him, you know, I, I think you should come home. We should at least start heading to the hospital just in case whatever happens. Okay, so he comes home about nine o'clock. We head over to the hospital. I get in, like I said, I've been contracting at this point for since three in the morning. And I get in and they have me go into the triage and they check me and I am a whopping three centimeters dilated. Not very pleasing, but my contractions are all five to seven minutes apart. And so they're like, okay, you know, we'll just have you walk because we don't want to necessarily admit you yet. Okay. Not what I want to hear, but you know, that's how it is. Okay. So we walk a little bit. I hadn't eaten because i been feeling a little nauseous just from, you know, the pain and just in general. <clears throat> well, um, I had the new kick out and like 
think he got chips or something. So I had a couple of those. They were nice and salty. Um, we walk around. I go back to the room. Check me again, and nothing really had changed. They wound up still consistently five to seven minutes apart. Um, so a couple were four, and I but I hadn't dilated anymore. Well, my midwife was able to come in, and she was talking to me and asking, "Now, do you want us to?" try and break your water? Do you want us to send you home? Because the worry was if my water broke, how fast would the baby come? But it was also, do we want to break the water if baby's not ready? So we opted to just kind of wait. So she went out and was like talking with some of the um, nurses and stuff. By this point, it's, oh, I think it had to be 130. 12, 1 I hadn't really eaten except those chips. So I was kind of hungry and tired. So I was dozing off because that was about the time I would usually lay down for a nap. And it felt like my contractions were getting lighter, which was normal. Um, like I said, with my Braxton Hicks before. Um, a little bit later, I woke up and I just hurl all over. And I go, and then I feel wet. And I'm like, oh, goodness. Oh, Maybe my water broke. That'd be awesome, you know? Even though I just puked my guts out. Nurse comes in. And then my water didn't break, but I did pee all over. So that was very lovely. So, like I said, I'd been sitting there for about an hour or so after my midwife had talked to me. So they have to call my midwife back. And they say, okay. They come back in and they decide to put me in a bathtub. At our hospital, they have like these really nice big jacuzzi tubs um, that you can labor in. So they find a room with one available because, of course, it's baby season. So everybody's giving birth about now. So they're kind of low in rooms. Well, thankfully, they were able to find a room with a bathtub. So they put me in there and have me just continue to labor in my bathtub. Or just the bathtub. So I sit in there for about, I'd say about an hour. Nothing really progressing again beyond five to seven minutes. They decide to check me again. I'm still a loose three, and um, but my water hasn't broken. It just feels, uh, their, their word term for it was bulgy. So that's super depressing. I've been, you know, it's probably about 3 p.m. now. I've been in labor for 12 hours. I haven't really eaten anything, and I'm just, I'm now starting to throw up from the pain every little bit. Well, by this point, they're like, we're going to go ahead and admit you because, you know, it's just consistent. It's just a matter of when. So they get me admitted, and then they give me some medicine to help me with my nausea. Lo and behold, it doesn't work, so I then continue to puke. I then sit there and labor, I think, for another almost two hours. It's just horrible pain. Um, my midwife comes in again, and she asks, you know, what do you want to do? And I'm like, can we please just break my water? I am done dealing with this. Just break it. We'll deal with it then. Hopefully it'll progress this labor and just get me going. Um, instead of like me leaving her, you know, instead of anything else and just continuing to stay in a pain. And she had asked if I wanted anything for pain management by that point. And it was just, I, yeah. And that's the name as people get epidurals. I'm just, they, I'm scared to get them. You know, I know it's like such a low percentage anything could go wrong, but with my look, I would be that one person. So um, I decided I would try the laughing gas when, after they break my water. Okay, so we wait for that to come in and then, or we go ahead and we get everything ready. She checks me and I've dilated to eight, six centimeters, which is great. So they go ahead and they get all of the baby stuff ready and then they pop my water. So within a minute or so of them popping first contraction after it's like, I feel I need to push. We, uh, yeah, no, we gotta go. So they had given Brown in the laughing gas and explained it. Um, and so I have this mask that I have to put on that you hold over your face and like you breathe it in and it makes you just kind of loopy. It doesn't take away the pain, but it like, it's supposed to take the edge off. For me, I just found that I couldn't breathe as well. So personally, it was not for me. Um, I did not like it. So I wound up actually disregarding just the hose after that, just setting it up. And um, yeah. And then this little man 
came 20 minutes after my water had broken. So he was very, very quick. Um, he came out and he was just perfect little guy. I mean, eight pounds, which it's between both of mine. My first was eight five, second was six thirteen. So he was just a good size. And it was, and it was funny because afterwards, you know, my midwife looks at me and goes, "Oh, it wasn't so bad, was it?" You know, jokingly. And of course, I'm like, "No, it wasn't." <laughs> Whereas the whole day I had just been just absolute pain, told my husband, never again. And it's just, you know, it's funny how as soon as you have the baby and you see, see all of that work and progress, the results of that, it's just, yep, you were worth it. It wasn't so bad. You were worth it. So I hope you guys enjoyed hearing the birth story. I always like hearing other people's birth stories. I always think it's, you know, super interesting. And introducing you guys to little Jack. Um, I hope to get back on the ball and get some more videos out, um, here. If I'm a little, my scheduling is a little abnormal, please bear with me. I am adjusting to parenting life with three children, three and under, so, but I look forward to sharing some videos with you with organizing this new house, some decorating, as well as some parenting tips. Be sure to subscribe and to so say that you don't miss any of the videos coming up. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye.